all right so how's everybody doing okay so in this video we're gonna go over joule heating okay so we've been talking we've been dealing with um heat conduction we've been dealing with transport with generation and there are three main ways of uh, heat generation nuclear reaction chemical reaction and electric uh some sort of electricity okay some application of uh, electricity flow of electricity okay resistance in wires so in this case we have a spe we have a cylindrical wire of dimension d and l with a constant resistance r and the current as given by the ammeter reading over here is i amps i ampere all right and we have to derive the temperature profile so the, uh, there's going to be, before I move on to the actual solution, uh, it's a good foresight to, I'm just going to, as, as a good practice, I'm just going to uh, look at how the generation term is going to look like. The source term is going to be equal to I square. Okay, let me just switch different colors. So the source term in this problem is going to be I square. I, I being the current times R the resistance divided by the volume of the wire and since it's a perfect cylinder the volume of the wire is approximately pi over 4 times d square times L that's gonna be the well, this entire term is gonna have units of if you're working in SI units this is gonna have units of watts per meter cube so uh, power per so power per volume or energy per time per volume okay so this is gonna fit nicely in our heat conduction equation where er all the terms where all the terms are in energy rate of energy per volume okay let's see so the assumptions all right uh, steady state steady state all the partial derivatives with respect to time are gonna go to zero constant thermal conductivity and uniform heat generation so we're assuming that this source term here is not a function of position it is not a function of position it is the same value at l equals zero and the same value at l equals like it uh, it does not vary with the length with the axial length or the radius all right or the radial distance and one more assumption that i should be including here is that we only have we only have heat transfer in radial direction only heat transfer in r the radial direction and this is a good assumption because the diameter is really small compared to the axial length which means that the areas the cross the cross-sectional area is going to be small which means the areas of the faces are going to be really small hence the heat conduct the heat loss at those uh, faces is going to be negligible compared to the heat loss radially all right so let's see with that in mind let's see how our heat equation in its vector notation is going to look like so steady state bye bye steady state bye bye and uh, yeah we can't rid of, get rid of the source term we have generation we have heat generation in this problem so in vector notation, our equation is going to become negative S over K, the thermal co thermal conductivity. Oh yeah, okay, thermal conductivity is constant. Times the equals the Laplacian of temperature. Okay. And once again, vector notation, not very helpful. And we're going to have to move to a different coordinate system. And in this problem, cylindrical wire, cylindrical coordinates. Yay okay so we have partial derivatives we have to uh, reduce the partial differential equation to an ordinary differential equation all right let's see so this bad boy right here is going to go to zero why there is no heat transfer in the theta direction and there is no heat transfer in the axial direction keep in mind there's only the the reason both of these terms drop out is that there's only heat transfer heat transfer in radial direction 
okay so if there were temperature differences in theta and temperature differences in z that would imply that there's going to be heat transfer because heat is driven by temperature differences right and this is the only term that's going to survive this is the only term that's going to survive because we have heat transfer in the radial direction if you have heat transfer in the radial direction you're going to have temperature differences in the radial direction okay so our ordinary differential equation we're getting we're going to get an ordinary differential equation now s all right keep in mind that s over k is a constant and that equals 1 over r i'm going to get rid of partial derivatives because now we know that it's just an ordinary differential equation r dt dr so a second order ordinary differential equation a second order ordinary differential equation second order ODE and we're gonna need since it's second order we're gonna need two boundary conditions so the boundary condition the first boundary condition since we have cur curved coordinates at r equals 0 at r equals 0 there is gonna be the Flux is going to be equal to zero, which means that the dt dr evaluated at r equals zero is going to be also is going to be equal to zero. And the second boundary condition, okay, at r equals d over two, d over two being the radius, d over two being the radius of our uh, cylindrical wire, we're going to have a fixed temperature. And let's call that T surface. So in the next part of this video, we're going to perform the integration. After performing the integration, we're going to be using our boundary conditions to get the actual temperature profile. So yeah, let's give you guys a quick recap before we end this video. So yeah, joule heating, joule heating per unit volume can be modeled by current squared times radius divided by the volume. Okay. And and this is going to be a constant term because every variable, like uh, there, there are no variables. I is constant, R is constant, D is constant, L is constant. My assumptions, very good. And I reduced my heat, my heat equation, uh, cylindrical coordinates, because we have cylindrical geometry. Uh, reduced my partial differential equation to an ODE and, yep, boundary conditions, two boundary conditions. We're going to, in the next video, we're going to, perform the integration and use the boundary conditions to evaluate the constants of integration. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys.